Welcome back. In today's video, I'll show you how to add the bcrypt hashing algorithm to our application, which is how we handle password authentication for users. If you're unfamiliar with password hashing, the basic idea is that you never store the user's password in your database. Instead, you apply a hash function, which is a special type of one-way function that transforms the user's password into a new value that can't easily be reversed to recover the password. This transform value is what you store in the database. When the user wants to log in, you apply the same transformation to the password they're attempting to log in with. If the result is the same as the value in your database, then they entered the same password. This way, if an attacker gains access to your database, all they get are hashed passwords. Of course, they can try to crack the passwords using brute force by trying different combinations and applying the same hash function we used until they find a match. But hashing algorithms like bcrypt are designed with a cost parameter that allows us to tune how much computational power the hash requires. This allows us to increase the cost of your hashes to keep up with the increase in computational power over time. The first thing we need to do is install the bcrypt package. So open up a terminal and type go get golang.org slash x slash crypto slash bcrypt. And that'll install our bcrypt package. Now we can move on to the code and import this package into our project. The first thing I want to do is remove that test handler I added in the previous video. Then I want to add two new handlers to our application for registering new users. The get handler will just return the registration template. So I'll copy the code from the login get handler and change the template name. While we're at it, let's go ahead and create that template. I'm basically just going to copy the login code Add a div so we have some new lines here. And then add a new field for the password. And we might want to change some of the words. That should do. Actually, I just realized I messed up some of the HTML. Let me go back and correct that real quick. That's better. Now let's write the post handler, which is where we'll actually be creating the user accounts. The first thing we need to do is parse the form and grab the username and password that was submitted.
Now we can get to the actual bcrypt part. First, we'll define a cost parameter. I'll just use the default cost value from bcrypt for now. Then we can generate the actual hash. Bcrypt expects our password to be in byte form instead of string, so we'll go ahead and convert that here. And include the cost parameter. At this point, I'll add another bad example of error handling by returning from the function if something went wrong. Actually, fixing all these bad error handling examples should probably be the next video before this gets too far along. But for now, we'll leave it as is and tell Redis to set the hash for our username key. The zero here is to tell the set method that this key shouldn't expire. Now we can modify the login handler to validate our password. First, we grab the password field from the post form. Then we look up the user key from Redis to get the stored hash for that user. Then, more bad error handling. <laughs> now we can use the bcrypt package to compare the hashed password from our database with a hash of the password they're attempting to log in with. Again, it expects the password to be a byte array instead of a string, so we convert it. This time our bad error handling will exit the function if the password was incorrect, which is sort of what we want. Because now if the password wasn't incorrect, then the session is created and they're logged in. Now we can modify the index handler to redirect the user to the login page if they're not logged in. This is only an example, and there are better ways to handle this that I'll show in later videos because this approach has some flaws. One of them being that we aren't forcing the user to be logged in for the post request to this handler, which doesn't make any sense at all. Now we can also add a redirect to the registration handler that takes them to the login page, so the user can sign in after they're done registering.
Oh, and we need to update the login template. Because our original one only used a username, and now we need the password. I'm actually just going to copy the code from the registration form and paste it in here. Then just change the name so it makes more sense. Another thing I'll do is add a redirect to the login handler. And this is so when they're done logging in, they're redirected to the index page. Now let's see if everything works. So we'll go over to a terminal and type go run main.go. Looks like it started without any errors. So let's open up a browser. And first I'll just try to go to the index page, which I shouldn't be able to do. And that's exactly what we wanted. It redirected us to the login page. But we don't have a login, so let's go ahead and register. I'm going to register as Davy with the password password. When we clicked register, it took us to the login page, which is also what we wanted. So now if I type in my password, it takes me to the comments page. And that means that our authentication is working. There are some things I glossed over in this video, like the fact that the registration handler doesn't prevent someone from registering with the same username as an existing user. That's actually a pretty big flaw that we'll need to fix in a future video. But at least we have bcrypt authentication working, and in the next video I'll show how to handle errors and return a proper HTTP status code. Bye.